everyone, Mariko and Kiyomi here from the Bridgewell Real Estate Group and welcome back to the Bridgewell Vlog where we talk about all things real estate specifically in the greater Vancouver area. And as some of you may have guessed, I usually bring Kiyomi on when I'm talking about pre-sales and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Yeah, and so in today's video, we're going to be talking about pre-sale and pre-construction deposits. Mm -hmm. So specifically, we're going to be going over like the schedule, um, the, amount. the amounts, if you can negotiate deposits and also kind of going into that realm of down payments versus deposits and how all of that works compared to resale versus presale. Yeah, and there are a lot of differences when it comes to presale versus resale, which we've highlighted in other videos, but the deposit's definitely one of them. Um, and before we get into the nitty gritty of pre-construction deposits, just want to welcome everybody back that is um, returning to the Bridgewell Group vlog, but if you haven't been here before, again, my name is Mariko and this is Kiyomi and we're both residential realtors in the greater Vancouver area and this blog um, channel really talks about all things real estate in that area specifically but we also cover things provincially within British Columbia and also federally within Canada. We talk real estate news, tips for sellers, tips for buyers, pre-sale and resale. so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and um, leave us a like for this video and definitely comment down below if you have any questions or if you um, have recommendations on what you want future videos to be like because yeah, we always hear, yeah. <laughs> struggle with content creation so uh, again welcome back if you are a returning subscriber and uh, make sure to subscribe if you aren't already but Let's getting get into, into pre-construction deposits Ooh. let's do it really good baseline to start this video off is basically what is the difference between a deposit and a down payment and this is relevant for both pre-sale and resale but essentially your deposit is going to form a part of your down payment so if you're putting 20% down and your deposit is 10% then that means that that 10% is going to be your initial kind of holding amount until the completion time where you're going to pay the remaining of your total down payment so in this example say 20% total down less the 10% deposit you already had to hold the property. That means you have 10% that's left of your down payment to pay at completion plus any closing costs. Um, so that's just the initial understanding of deposit versus down payment. Um, and then when you're looking at the main differences between resale and presale specifically with deposits, it's definitely the amount is very different mm -hmm. with presale versus resale. Um, who holds the deposit is different and also the schedule at which the deposits are due are drastically different with pre-sale sure. properties. Yeah. So when it comes to the deposit amounts, we usually see a range of deposit amounts. It can be as low as 5%. I've seen as high as 25% mm -hmm. in terms of like a luxury high rise product. But the more common deposit amounts that we see are 15 to 20%. Mm -hmm. um, there are cases where we see 10%, but that's more of an incentive. Um, and we'll see that a little bit more in like a slower market um, when things aren't really as hot and products aren't moving as quickly. Yeah, and I think that that's a really good point. It's like the deposit amounts um, are often largely driven by where they're at in the presale mm -hmm. project or yeah. what the market is like. It's not like it's always going to be the same amount exactly. every single time. Um, it kind of depends from project to project and market to market. Yeah, well, and that's the one thing with pre-sales in general is that no two pre-sales are the same. Yeah. And the way yeah. that they sell or anything like that, it's never going to be the same. Exactly. Yeah. So there's no like standardized expectation for the deposit like mm -hmm. there is with resale where it's almost always 5%. Yeah. Um, but there's certainly like a common range, like you were saying, kind exactly. of in that 15 to 20% mark. Mm -hmm. I think that another like reason why you often see 20% is just because of developers construction financing yeah um, and so you'll often get like no negotiation on that 20% amount for example because they're really not in control of whether they're able to bring that amount down mm -hmm. just because the bank has a certain requirement for yeah. them to hit a quota before they can start making concessions on things like deposits yeah exactly. Um, and that was something that I learned quite recently, actually, um, mm -hmm. that the the developers have less control over the, the deposits than you may think. Yeah, and I think not a lot of people know that, and it's a really good point for sure. Yeah, yeah. and with, um, with that on that final note as well, um, a lot of it, you're starting to see those incentives for lower deposit schedules as mm -hmm. a result of that maybe be a little bit more flexible once the developer has that conditional yeah. approval for their financing. So yeah. when we're seeing amendments go out, it's like, do they, are they in the building permit stage? Are they okay. at the financing yeah. approval stage? Like where 
where are they at? And that, that also kind of comes back to the point that we had earlier where it's like, it depends on the life cycle of where they're at in the presale. Yeah, exactly. And when you are purchasing in the presale, are you purchasing right when they're launching the project? Are you purchasing when it's a year down the road and they've already started building? Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that can really play, um, a role in terms of the, variable when it comes to deposits yeah. yeah but you know recap on this generally the lowest you're going to see is five percent yeah. really the highest you're typically seeing is 25 percent very commonly in that 15 to 20 percent range mm -hmm. more so the 20 percent i would yeah, say yeah i agree um and then really like if the market is hot or not as hot sorry if mm -hmm. the market's cooler um or if there's an incentive or maybe they're later in the project that's when you're kind of going to start to maybe see those concessions closer to the 10 percent range yeah well, the next big difference is the deposit schedule. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, 15 to 20%, I have to pay 15 to 20% right when away. I rate the offer. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not like that. With deposits, it's over a period of time. So if you're familiar with resale, resale, that 5% deposit is typically due um, upon or within 24 hours of subject removal, which is usually around a week range. Mm -hmm. Whereas with pre-sales, it's a schedule set over a period of time. It can be a year, year and a half, two years in some yeah. situations. I find, yeah, with the deposit schedule, I mean, it, again, kind of going back to that, it really depends on where you're, when you're purchasing within the project um, and what kind of development it is too. Mm -hmm. Is it a townhome or low-rise development where maybe they only take two to three years to build? Is it a high-rise development where it's going to take five to eight years to build? Yeah. Um, because then we start to see that the deposit schedules will be a little bit longer um, and spread out over a period of time of, yeah, like Michael mentioned, a year, um, maybe even two years. Whereas with those quicker completions, um, quicker being two to three years, yeah. you're kind of seeing more of a three to six month deposit schedule. And it usually kind of happens within that first year of you writing that contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think um, a common amount that we really see is like, it's very normal to have an initial deposit on mm -hmm. writing. Um, it is then very normal to have your second deposit due at the rescission period. Yeah. Um, and then there's going to be typically a third deposit that is maybe due six months to 12 mm -hmm. months from there. Um, if we're kind of at the beginning of a project yeah. and then there's usually a fourth deposit that's kind of in that like 12 to 18 mm -hmm. or 24 months range. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, it really is over a period of time, but just really breaking down that um, first like initial deposit forming that um, like rescission deposit. Yeah. I think that that's probably a good clarification. Totally. And so that how that works is essentially when you go in to write a contract and you know, you go into the pre-sale, you see a unit and that's the one you want to write on. Um, typically what the developer will ask for is when you write that contract, you bring in an initial deposit of five to $10,000. $10, they'll say, they'll tell you, they'll tell the you exactly. Yeah. They'll tell you how much it is um, to hold that unit. And so you bring in that initial deposit uh, when you write that contract and then you have that seven day rescission period once that uh, offer is accepted. Uh, and then what will happen is, is that if you decide to move forward um, with the unit after the rescission period has passed, then that will form usually that next deposit. So if it's a 10% deposit, that $10,000 will be a part of that 10%. 10%. Yeah. So you're basically bringing 10% less 10k for exactly. that second deposit yeah but if you choose not to move forward um with the rescission period then you would get that money back and you wouldn't have to worry um about losing that initial deposit yeah and yeah. we have done another video on the rescission period if you're not familiar with it basically it's your time to do your due diligence and back out if you want to back out mm -hmm. um and with that initial holding deposit if you do back out during the rescission period then you are able to get that initial deposit back so it's not like money you've lost, but once you pass that rescission period, you're essentially committed to that property, mm -hmm. in which case um, then you you are committed to handing in those further deposits and you're, um, yeah. you don't want to lose them moving forward, obviously, because you've committed to the property. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that those are really the big things when it comes to mm -hmm. the, the deposit and the schedule. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess like kind of tying it all together with the amounts that we were talking about before, it's like it's very common to have that $10,000 initial deposit yeah. 
at rescission, say a 10% amount, and then that third deposit would be 5%, and then the fourth deposit would be another 5%. So you can kind of see like 10 plus 5 plus 5 is okay, 20%. 20%. Yeah. And so that's why it's super normal to see that 20% deposit schedule. Mm -hmm. Last but not least in terms of these big differences between pre-sale and resale deposits is who holds the deposit. Mm -hmm. um, and in resale, almost always it's the buyer's agent's brokerage, and that deposit gets held in trust. Yeah. In pre-sales, it's always the developer's lawyer in trust. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to see, yeah, that that be definitely the common norm. And so you have to be comfortable with that. Yeah. And usually it is by form of bank draft, but you do see, you know, wire transfer options as well. Yeah. And I feel like the wire transfer is becoming um, a bit more of a common option now too. You're seeing kind yeah. of both. Whereas before it was a bank draft and you kind of had to ask and make sure that the wire Wire transfer, transfer was, was okay. Yeah. Wire transfers are more expensive though in terms yeah. of banking fees. <laughs> so um, bank drafts are the way to go, but yeah. I mean, if you're in you town an or something, yeah. yeah, it might be easier to do the wire transfer as well. 100%. Yeah. And in regards to knowing where all this information is, like who the lawyer is, um, as well as going back to like what the schedule is, what your amounts are, mm -hmm. you'll find this all in your contract. Um, but you usually get if like if you're going in kind of at that initial sales or even if you're just going into the presentation center once they've already started sales, mm -hmm. um, they typically give you an information sheet that would have that information on it. Yeah. Um, it outlines the schedule, it outlines the amounts, whether it's 10, 15, 20 percent, um, as well who it as goes out to. who the lawyer is in trust. Um, so you would know all of that information from that, but then you can verify in the contract that that amount is exactly what you're paying. Yeah. Definitely. So I think a common question that we get asked pretty often is about like negotiating the deposit amounts. Can I get yeah. a lower deposit amount? How can I change can I, my schedule? Yeah. Like what can I do about this deposit if it mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily work for me? Yeah. For um, sure. And so... I mean, that one's really interesting, right? Because it depends on the developer. As Kimmy said, like there's no two pre-sales that are the same. Yeah. I think that it's important to go back to what we were saying before about how it's really normal to see that 20% amount because yeah. of the construction financing requirement. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand that the developers may have less flexibility and control than you may think with regards to the deposit. Yeah. Um, so definitely refer back to that if you um, skipped it over, you didn't hear it in this video earlier. Uh, but that that is a really big one that is a constraining factor. Yeah, and so I think that's where like the amounts can be really like set in stone. For sure. Um, but there may be a chance to negotiate the schedule instead. So say for example, you have a 20% deposit, they really can't change that amount, um, but they may be open to a longer deposit schedule timeline. Exactly. Um, yeah. So instead of like five, 10, and another five, maybe you can branch it out to five, 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 yeah, right? Yeah, and we've um, done that before for sure. Yeah, exactly. And I think another way that you can um, sometimes secure a lower deposit schedule as well is if you are working with a pre-sale realtor and they have that exclusive VIP access to a project, mm -hmm. uh, then that's a really uh, great opportunity to usually secure a lower deposit because that's typically one of the incentives that the developer will include. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the way that pre-sales work in terms of like just everything access, in general yeah. is all about access. It's yeah. all about VIP access, VVIP. Yeah. It goes first tier, second tier, third mm -hmm. tier, like it works their way down. Um, and generally like they're family and friends at the top, yeah. VVIP realtors, VIP realtors, and then they do like a general public release. release yeah. And so yes, working with a you know VIP realtor or someone that has that relationship with the developer or experience in pre-sales, a lot of the times it will get you that first tier pricing because mm -hmm. as they um, as they release over time, generally the prices Price increase. Up. Yeah. Um, but you're right, like at the beginning, generally they'll have some kind of uh, um, incentive mm -hmm. depending on what that be yeah. um, that could be one way that you could potentially lower or negotiate the deposit in some way whether that be a period of time or yeah. the amount definitely First time home buyers as well, they may offer special incentives for you. I feel like prices are already hard enough, so yeah, they try and give definitely. you a break here or there. And I mean, at the end of the day, even if it's not advertised or you're not sure if you can get a different deposit amount or you're not sure if you can get a different schedule, I mean, we've had some crazy things be accepted. All totally. you can really do is ask. Like, yeah. There's no harm in asking. And worst case scenario, they say no and exactly. you walk away or you make it work, whatever the situation is. Um, but yeah, like Mariko said, you might as well ask. Yeah. Right. 
Um, and I think with like first time home buyers um, or other people that are looking to save up a little bit more, pre sales are a really great uh, opportunity because mm -hmm. of this deposit setup and the deposit schedule and the amounts over time um, because it allows you that time to save. All you have to do is pay those deposits in that schedule and then at the once you get to completion that's when you owe the remainder of your down payment and also start those mortgage payments yeah, yeah. definitely no there's a lot of uh, benefits to pre-sales there's certainly risk to pre-sales as well and we've done uh, videos on that so definitely make sure to check them out we can uh, leave a link to those too uh, but if pre-sales are something that you're thinking about I mean there's definitely uh, a lot of different pre-sales that are out there an specifically abundance. within an abundance, <laughs> abundance of pre-sales pre with uh, a very wide variety yeah. of deposits and deposit schedules and mm -hmm. so if that's something that you're wondering about definitely feel free to reach out to us anytime like yeah. we deal with pre-sales and resales mm -hmm. so if you were kind of trying to balance like which one is the better option for you that's definitely a conversation that we can have mm -hmm. um, and Jim is a pre-sale expert, yeah. so. Follow him as many as I can. There's a lot yeah. of moving parts when it comes to the amounts, but yeah, we're, we're working on trying to get that range of it. Yeah, yeah. and so if you do have uh, interest in a specific pre-sale or you're wondering about options like, hey, what are options in New Westminster for pre-sales? Yeah. Or Burnaby or condos or townhouses, low-rise, mm -hmm. high-rise, like just um, shoot us a message and we're always happy to help because we uh, definitely our pre-sale realtors. We have really great relationships yeah. with a lot of developers yeah, for sure. um, and that VIP access and we're gonna work our butts off to get you the right unit. So. Yeah, and the right deposit schedule. And the right deposit <laughs> schedule. <laughs> so we yeah. hope this video was helpful for everybody. If you are wondering more about pre-construction deposits, as I said, leave a comment down below and we'll try and get to them as fast as we can. Yeah. Um, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more updates on real estate news and information moving forward. And we hope that you like this video. Yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks so much for watching.